Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be talking about dominant and recessive genes and what they actually are. Now, this is a topic that comes up at both key stage 3, 4 and 5. So we're just going to, in a nutshell, just summarise the key points about them. So this is really aimed at sort of key stage 3, 4 level. So to be able to explain this, I first of all need to just draw a pair of chromosomes. Now, in every body cell, and by body cell, I mean essentially not sperm and egg. If we just take a, a skin cell, for example, in the nucleus of that cell, there would be 46 chromosomes. And I've said in a previous video, chromosomes are just long molecules of DNA. So there are 46 pairs. We're just going to draw a random pair here. So let's say we just draw pair 7, just for the sake of argument. So this is pair 7, pair of chromosomes. Now, genes are small sections of DNA. Now, this is grossly undersized. This isn't to scale at all. But let's say, for example, this chromosome came from mother and this one came from the father because you get half your DNA from mother, half from father. So let's say this is mother's chromosome on the left, father's on the right. If we think of a particular gene, let's say the gene for the ability to tongue roll, Let's say the tongue rolling gene. Let's say that gene is here on the mother. Because every gene has a special locus, which is the point on the chromosome at which it's found. I'll write that just down at the bottom. This is more for key stage 3. So the locus is the point at which that a particular gene is found on the chromosome. Now, so, if the tongue rolling gene is at that position there, on the mother's chromosome, at exactly the same point, on the father's chromosome, we would find a gene for the ability to tongue roll. Now, we use the word gene to describe a small section of DNA. But an alternate version of the same gene we call an allele. So in textbooks and on the internet you often see these um, being referred to as alleles because technically the gene is an alternate version of the allele. So they're both, they're, in a way they're both alleles of each other. Now sometimes one gene can overpower another. It's stronger if you like. And that is what we mean by a dominant gene. So a dominant gene is one that can overpower another. A recessive gene is one that is weaker, a one that is overpowered by a dominant gene. Now, when you think of a, a particular kind of characteristic or trait, we pick a particular letter to represent it. So for tongue rolling, let's take the letter T. So we'll put the letter T. Now, if the gene were dominant, we give it a capital. So we'll call it, let's say the dominant gene for tongue rolling is this capital T. If it's recessive, we give it a little t, a lowercase version of the same letter. Now this person here, that red gene, so the one on the left, that may be dominant and the one on the right, on the father's, may be recessive. So the person might have one big T and one little t. So we assign a letter to each of those genes. Now, the letters themselves we call a person's genotype. So the genotype tells you basically the nature of the genes, whether they're dominant or recessive. So this person's genotype would be big T, little t. They have one dominant gene for tongue rolling, the big T, and one recessive gene, the little t. Tongue rolling is the physical trait. And the physical trait is called the phenotype. So a person's phenotype tells you physically what the trait is. So the genotype is like the letters, the phenotype is what the letters kind of mean. Now if we have a look, if 
we said dominant always wins. If this person here on the left, if on their chromosome they had a big T and a little t, then they would be able to tongue roll because they just need one of the dominant genes. Dominant always wins. If the dominant is there, it kind of wins. And that is what is shown. So the person may be big T, little t, or they may actually have two dominant genes. The one they inherit from the mum and dad both might be dominant. And as they're dominant, both, they would show the dominant trait. They would be able to tongue roll. So the only way that someone wouldn't be able to tongue roll in this case would be if they inherited two of the recessive genes, the weaker ones. And because there's no dominant trait there, it's not shown. So let's just think of another example. Let's say, and in, in real life, it's the case that brown hair is dominant to blonde. And we use a big B to represent brown. So we'll just put here, big B is brown, little b is blonde. So ultimately, if someone were big B, big B, remember they've got to have two genes, one from each parent. So every characteristic and every trait that you look at will have two genes. So if they were big B, big B, that person would have brown hair. If they were big B, little b, remember dominant wins, they would show the dominant trait and they would have also brown hair. They would need the two little b's to have blonde hair, recessive. And there's two other terms that are often used when we talk about dominant and recessive genes. We'll just shrink this just so we can write these two terms here. And these are the two homozygous and heterozygous. Now, homozygous, homo means same. So homozygous means that they have two of the same genes. So they may have two dominant or two recessive. So you often see people refer to when we think of their genotypes as maybe homozygous dominant or they could be homozygous recessive which means they have two recessive genes so homozygous dominant they have two dominant genes homozygous recessive they have two recessive genes hetero means different so if somebody is heterozygous it means they have two different genes, one dominant and one recessive. So we can simply just say they are heterozygous for their genotype. And that's ultimately it. So dominant genes are genes that overpower recessive genes. And if they're present, they will be expressed. And you need two recessive genes to show that particular recessive trait. And for any characteristic, it is ultimately comes down to the fact that you'll have two genes controlling it in certain cases there are, there are characteristics controlled by multiple genes but at this level we're going to say that characteristics are controlled by two one on the chromosome from the mother and one on the chromosome on the father remember there are 46 of these chromosomes within the nucleus of a body cell and there's genes all down that chromosome you'd always have them all paired there'd always be the gene and the allele the alternate version of it Okay, hope that helps.